Welcome to special format uh, video where we watch the um, Wednesday Tokovan. Normally these things happen on Fridays, but instead um, this time around they're doing a special one because this week is like some Bushiro game festival thingy going on. And so on Wednesday they're doing a special Dokovan. And uh, the reason why I'm actually doing this is because I'm not streaming, I'm actually at work, or working from home rather, but um, I'm just going to pop in whenever they announce something new, I think I've done this before at some point, and um, just kind of talk about whatever news they announce so that you can kind of see it all in a nicely compressed video with translations and stuff. But the things we're expecting is new Zero set, I am expecting um, set 11 to be announced here, and I'm also expecting maybe one of the VRs for a VBT 11, no, VBT 12 to potentially be announced as well, so that'll be pretty interesting, but they all always do a lot of fluff in these kind of uh, live streams, so I'm gonna skip over that, of course. Ugh, they just said that they're doing like some kind of like um, sports competition, and then depending on how well they do, we will get all kinds of zero news, including new cards and other stuff. Uh, stay, stay, stay tuned, I guess. We are now 40 minutes. <laughs> 40 almost 45 minutes into the stream and only now we are getting news all right first we're getting tournament news well the online event support is being powered up so they have two plans one is for the really try hard players on the on the left side and one is for the more casual players on the right side oh so it's like special medals and that kind of stuff and you get 20 pack tickets from the community hosted events now which is a really nice buff to this system all right so it looks like it's gonna be kind of like the casual one it's gonna be a bit more like in the sense that instead of having like the top cut getting prizes it's gonna be more in the sense that um it's gonna be kind of like shop tournaments so in shop tournaments in japan um it's very much like uh, at the end of a tournament, they do like a rock, paper, scissors with the in, all the players that entered and then random people get prizes. So they want to allow people that don't want to play too seriously but still want to enjoy playing and like socializing with people that play Zero. Um, they basically make these kind of like casual tournaments. Ooh. Ooh, and the people that organize tournaments will get their special sleeves. Oh, so this is if you host tournaments four more times, then you get these... Um, if you host tournaments four more times, you get these sleeves. That's very cool. Oh, and this is what the winner's emblem looks like if you win the community tournaments. So these are hosted by fellow players, basically. That's really cool, actually. I like that kind of system a lot. I think it's nice to support the community around tournaments. Uh, it helps, especially during this era where, you know, we can't really go to events. It's definitely very nice. I hope that Global probably will incorporate this too, so very nice. Oh, and they're gonna give us some info on the October tournaments. So it's gonna be a Tai Senkai, so it's like a fight meeting kind of tournament. Um, so it's gonna be two deck format, Swiss draw. And let's see, so registration opens up on the 3rd, I believe. And from the 3rd to the 10th of October. And then the tournament itself, ooh, they bump, bump the time. The check-in is now from 5.30 to 6.30 and the tournament starts at 7 p.m. That is perfect for European time, finally. Because it used to be you have to wake up at like 4 or 5 a.m. Now you can wake up at like... To check in, I can actually... It's basically for me at 10.30. So like... For Americans, it's it's literally middle of the night. So now for Americans, you have to kind of wake up in the middle of the... Middle of the night if you want to play the JP tournament. But... For, you know, all of Asia and all of Europe... You know, now we have two regions. Before, it was literally only good for Asia. Not even for Europe or for America. Now it's at least good for two regions. <laughs> So, that's good. Now we're going to be seeing the actual new card reveals. So, next set coming up. Let's see here. Alright, so they're like, what kind of cards will we reveal to you today? These cards are... So, he's saying we have to start with talking about the gacha first. And there we go. Everyone knew it. It's literally just set 11. Set 11 revealed. So this is Genesis, Narukami, Kagero, and Aquaforce. So they initially wanted to only show two cards today, but because of the the sports thing they did, they're going to be showing more. So here we have Fortuna. Fortuna is Limit Break 4. When you drive check a non-trigger card, you may Soul Blast 3 and put that card into your hand, and then you add one extra drive check. That's very cool. So you actually get to add the card you drive check by Soul Blasting 3. Second skill is, when a trigger is checked, if it's the second one this turn, 
you gain another drive check. Whoa! And then the third skill is Soul Bus 3, she gains plus 5k power. This is really good. Wow. Wow, this is really, really good. This is actually a very cool ability because you essentially get to add non triggers to your hand, which means like PGs, great twos, and then. So he's like more interceptors, more boosters, and then on top of that, the second skill isn't even limit break, so you can ride her early, and if you sack two triggers on one turn, then you get another drive check. <laughs> this is so interesting, I like it a lot. I like it a lot. Ooh, Dauntless Drive Dragon, a long-awaited card. So, limit break four when you ride on top of him for that turn, your Vanger gains plus 10k power and the following ability. Vanger circle once per turn, at the end of the battle it attacked, uh, Katamas one, discard three. And this unit stands and draw two, so it's pretty much the same as the old one. Second skill is during your turn, if you have more regards than your opponent, gain plus 3k power. Okay, it's literally the same, I think. Almost the same. Um, you know, except that it draws, so that's about it. Then I just typed out the effect on Twitter and it barely fit into the actual text box. Here comes the third one. Ooh, Blockade Inferno. Let me break four. If you have a Seal Dragon in your soul, if you have two or more Seal Dragons in your soul, you may Cannon Blast 2. For that turn, he gains plus 10,000 power, and you retire all of your opponent's grade 2 rear guards. If you retire 3 or more, draw 1. And he's a cross ride booth blockade. This is a pretty big change. They actually made quite some big changes. That soul requirement wasn't there before, but I think it makes sense. So yeah, I mean, this kind of goes hand in hand with uh, how Steel Dragons are designed. So they're designed to like retire your opponent's stuff and then force them to call, um, force them to call other grade 2s from the top of their deck. And then basically you make them call a bunch of great twos and then he just nukes them for Kalmas too, so it's very nice. The soul requirement is interesting, so I guess it's gonna be quite xenophobic. Uh, you have to really, really ride. Make sure you ride the grade one and grade two. Also the grade three searcher, I think for if I'm not mistaken, the grade three searcher for I know, I don't think the grade three searcher for Kagura is a seal dragon, is it? I can't remember right now. Alright, here comes the fourth one. Ooh, sweep command. Good old Steve. Limit break 4, if by your opponent's ability, a opponent's rearguard is... If by your card's ability, an opponent's rearguard is retired, you may count plus 2, soul plus 2, draw 1, and retire one of your opponent's rearguards. For that turn, he gains power plus 5,000. Plus 5,000. Second skill, Vanguard Circle, when placed, put one of your eradicated rearguards into your soul. If you do, retire one of your opponent's rearguards. Did this change a lot? It's a very good ability, though, because it basically has removal... A lot of removal, actually. You get to pop an opponent's rear. So you have to use his first... You can actually ride him, pop with his skill, and then his limit break four triggers, popping popping another rear and drawing one and gaining power. Seems seems alright. Seems alright. Oh, and here we have Transcore Dragon. Limit break four, when right on top. Uh, for that turn, your Vanguard gains plus 10k in the following ability. When it attacks the Vanguard, your opponent has to randomly... Oh, your opponent has to randomly choose a non-sentinel card and discard it. If they cannot discard, for that battle gains plus one crit, and your opponent cannot sentinel. So it's literally the same attack. It's the same skill as before. That's kind of wild. Yeah, this is very similar to what it used, what it initially was, actually. So that's very nice. That's very nice. Oh, and we're getting rank fight news. Oh, it's another Bermuda season. Oh, and look, it's Revon! Haha, <laughs> as if we didn't know that. Alright, nothing new, nothing exciting, at least for me. I know there's some people that are like super diehard Bermuda fans that go crazy for these Bermuda seasons, but for me, it's skippable. Alright, and that's all for the Zero news for today. Alright, now we're getting the TCG news. Let's go, baby. It's time. Alright. VBT12. I know for a fact they're not going to be revealing, uh... They're probably not going to be revealing Gavriel this early. I can only hope. Alright, let's see. I can't wait for Gavriel to get revealed, but for the time being, we gotta work with what we got. Ooh, Angel Feathers triple rare, okay. Yafukiru. Vanguard Rigor Circle when placed, count us one for that turn, this unit gains plus five thousand plus three thousand power. Anantano damage is on Kara, it's my tefa than Nikosh. Okay, so you add one card from your Amazon to your hand, and if you did, deal one damage to your Vanguard. This ability only activates once per turn. That's so good! Yo, this is so good in premium too. Yo, you could like run this in Gavriel Ultima and just like stack crit stand, proc the crit with this, and then proc the stand on battle. 
or like on a rescue check after the battles have started. Oh, oh, this is so good. It's basically a rescue check. It's basically a rescue check, and I cannot be happier. Oh my god, yeah, it's an, it's so it's the art is amazing. Her like she has blasters going around her, and she has like this like street outfit going on. This is an angel feather card. God damn. I'm tight. I'm tight just thinking about this. This is so good. I cannot get over how good this is. I can't get over how good this is. It's actually... Like, it's a plus one. Okay, we're getting... Oh, there's a force two for the 10th anniversary. That's very nice. It's it's literally... It's a plus one to hand. Literally, for Kalamas, one plus one. It's on place from anywhere, which means that you can actually... Oh my god, my premium brain is exploding. Oh my god, there's so much potential in this one card. Oh, oh it's so good. Oh my god, I love it. I'm just so surprised, like, we went from angels being shafted for years to suddenly getting this level of quality. That's amazing. Like, this, this to me feels like, it, it feels like Columbard. Like, not, not saying that it's as amazing as Columbard, but I'm saying, like, the amount that Columbard pushed Grand Blue as a clan is how much Yafkiel will push Angel Feather. I just can't believe how good that Angel card is. Like the the oh Agrovail and Percival, 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 Percival. Oh my God. It's Aglo Agro Aglovale and Percival. Aglovale and Percival. No way. I can't believe that they put Oh my god. Oh my god. I can't believe they're bringing back Aglovale and Percival. They're actually bringing back Bluish Flames. They're actually bringing back Bluish Flames. That's actually insane. Alright, that's it for today's stream. It took like a whole hour just for this little bit of information, but I'm happy with the information. The new set, I predicted exactly what it what it actually is, um, so it's exactly the same as what I thought it is. But, oh my god, the angel card is so fucking good. Oh my god, we're, boys, we're eating. Fellow Angel Feather players, I want you to know that we are eating good. We are having whole ass meals, we're eating at Michelin star restaurants thanks to this one card. God bless. <laughs>